Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new Analyst Angle. Uh, today, we're going to talk about ransomware. Uh, what a great topic. I feel like I'm a broken record because I talk about it all the time. Well, it's because it's a big issue. Uh, and there are some great solutions uh, that exist today that can really help you protect your data, recover your data, uh, and really navigate through the complexities of, of ransomware recovery. So uh, today, I'm welcoming a good friend, Andy Hurt uh, from Cobalt Iron. Andy, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, great. Thanks, Christoph. It's great to see you again and uh, happy to be on this analyst angle. Um, yeah, so my name is Andy Hurt. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Cobalt Iron. I've been in I'll say, data backup recovery and archival for over, over, over a decade, so maybe even longer than that now. Oh, gosh, time flies. Um, but yeah, so uh, Cobalt Iron, I'll give a little bit of overview around what who Cobalt Iron is and what we do. Um, so Cobalt Iron was also founded about a decade ago um, and has built a, I'll say, a pluggable SaaS platform for data protection. Um, and when I think about how we are differentiated in the market, it is a very crowded space and with lots of players in it. Um, I think about primarily four different things. First one being around security. So security has been a part of our Compass platform from day one. Um, we are pedantic about security, and it's something that we believe should never be an add-on. It should never be a, I'll say, charge separately for. It should be something that all of our customers consume, and uh, whether or not you're a small customer or a large customer, you get the same level of security. Um, if you think about backup in general, backup was never meant to be a security product. It was meant to sit behind a firewall. It was meant to be there to be a recovery from some sort of event. Um, but it's been forced to become a, a security product, and many, I'll say, the um, solutions in the market today are playing catch up. And it's good they are because we need them. We we need security all over the board. So security is number one. Second thing I would say is simplicity. When you look at backup, backup truly is I'll say one of the most complex um, complex workloads in the data center. It touches everything. It's the largest application in the data center, and it's Everybody on the planet would say it's complex. So what we've done is we've looked at it through software in terms of how do you automate um, the backup operations? And we've taken an approach to be able to automate about 80% of a daily backup operations that a backup admin has to do. So that frees up the backup admin to focus on higher, you know, quite frankly, higher priority projects. The third thing is gonna be scale. So when we think about scale, um, we have one single code base running globally. And that same code base services some small SMB type of customers, all the way up and through, I'll say, enterprise customers that have hundreds and hundreds of petabytes that we're protecting on their behalf. And then finally, it is delivered as SaaS native. So when you think about the platform, um, you pay for you pay for what you use. Uh, so it is a true native SaaS application, as well as because it is SaaS and we do have one single code base running globally. What that means is that we um, are always running the latest version of code, the latest version of software patches, the latest version of firmware, the latest version of data protection software. So you're making certain that you're not falling behind and actually um, exposing, I'll say, security uh, gaps that, uh, that individuals can attack into. So that's the platform um, at a very high level, probably a lot to digest there. Uh, but yeah, Christoph, back to you. Yeah, right. Actually, we, we have a, a very nice slide that summarizes this, um, uh, the, the four points or four or five points you made really around uh, cyber, around the fact that the delivery modality, and I want to focus on that for our viewers, because I think uh, the idea is that you want to have a, a very flexible way of approaching uh, the solution, the delivery modality of being an appliance that can be delivered essentially uh, ready to go uh, as a product. Uh, and of course, manage, consume like a SaaS type of uh, environment. That's very important. Why? Because you mentioned it, the scale, this complexity. And uh, the other aspect is when we talk about ransomware, it's typically not just you. It's you and a team, if you're focused on recovery, of other folks who work uh, across IT. So it's important to have this this flexibility. The other point I want to mention is that uh, we also live in a world today where, uh, or in which uh, IT 
specialists, what I call the PhDs in backup, well, they don't exist anymore. I mean, hopefully we still have a few, but they're building products, they're building solutions like you guys are. Uh, so I think it's all about the user experience, about simplicity, uh, about the ability to manage multiple data centers, uh, multiple environments uh, across the board. So a great solution. And actually, I'd like to even go a little further with you, Andy, on how uh, the, the platform uh, works. Uh, you call it Compass, which is, of course, uh -huh. a great way of getting a direction. Uh, so how do you find that ransomware true north uh, here? Can you walk us through yeah. and can bring up another um, another slide here. Uh, walk us through the architecture because I think this is a very unique solution uh, in the market. Nobody else really approaches it this way. Exactly right, Christoph. So a lot of the market is talking about zero trust, which is absolutely you should be. So don't get me wrong there. That is a very important framework. Um, what we've done is we've created what we call a zero access architecture. So if you look at the orange perimeter line around the box there, that's really an isolated, I'll say, environment. Um, within that environment sits the Compass platform. So at the bottom, you'll see that there are what we call Compass vaults. And those Compass vaults, could, to your point, Christoph, could be sitting in a data center, could be sitting in a remote site, could be sitting in, in, in a public cloud environment, could be sitting quite frankly anywhere so it is a very flexible environment those vaults can be sitting anywhere those vaults are what protect the data those those vaults have zero access into them so there isn't any access into the vault to manage the backup software to manage the backup storage to manage the backup um, i'll say database to manage the backup catalog so on and so forth there are no credentials into it and quite frankly those credentials are where you're getting hacked and cyber criminals love to get into because once they get into there, they've got everything that they need. Um, those vaults connect to what we call is the uh, analytics engine. That analytics engine is consuming operational metadata. Um, to be clear, the customer's data never leaves their security zones. It stays, stays on-prem or wherever they have their data residing today. But we are consuming that operational metadata. And that metadata we're, we're able to analyze um, to do things with software automation, to automate the daily operations. But more importantly, we're doing things around cyber protection and cyber detection to be able to be proactive in terms of what's happening in their environment, um, ensure that they are protected. And then finally, on the left-hand side, we have which is called Compass Commander. And you briefly referenced it on the, um, already, which is that single unified experience to, um, I'll say, manage your backup operations in a way that independent on if your data is located in the cloud, on-prem, remote sites, um, you have one single view of your entire application um, and that application, uh, oh, sorry, uh, one single view of your backup independent on where it's located and it's exception-based management. So all you're looking at are things that may have failed. You're looking at things that I'll say um, you need to dig into because they're learning on. You're not looking at the entire backup environment anymore. That, that That's too complex. Well, you bring up, uh, again, a very good point in, in, in operational efficiency. I know it's one of the key uh, anchors in your messaging, but it's a reality. And that's really where I want to sort of start connecting the dots. We talked about, uh, you know, what you do as, a, as an organization. So your, your laser uh, focus on ransomware protection and cyber resilience. Well, now we've just reviewed the architecture and it's very interesting how you have uh, this concept of the zero perimeter, uh, zero trust or zero access perimeter. I think it's Definitely, uh -huh. you know, protect the protector, right? That's definitely the way to go. No question about that. And and there's a lot of, um, I think, competition out there that talks about this topic, but nobody really approaches it this way. Now, I'd like to to connect back to sort of everyday reality. Now, you have a bunch of customers. So maybe give us an overview of the type of customers you have. And do you have some, um, uh, you know, uh, remarks on the challenges that you've observed from your own customers? Uh, and then maybe we'll go into a couple of anecdotes because I'm, I'm sure you have a couple of good ones. Uh, so, so what are, what are the challenges really, Andy, that that your customers are are, are telling you about? Yep, absolutely. So um, we do target, I'll say, the large enterprise is kind of where our sweet spot is. The more complex the environment, the better. Um, the compass really shines in that type of environment. But if we go to the next slide, that I wanted to show a real world experience. So this event actually happened over the weekend, this past weekend, August 30th, 2024. 
Um, this happens to be a friend of mine's business um, that was attacked. And as you'll see within the highlighted section there, it says that um, your internal infrastructure of your company is fully or partially dead, all your backups virtual and physical. So this is a ransomware demand and ransomware in and of itself is not the attack, right? The attacks already occurred. The, the attack probably happened days or weeks or maybe even months prior to this. And the attack was all about gaining access and breaching credentials to get into the into their environment. And that's something that has cl clearly happened here. What we're seeing is that um, most, if not all, I can't say all, but most um, attacks that were happening today, they're absolutely targeting the backup environment. Why is that? It's pretty straightforward. If you can get the backup environment, you've got the crown jewels, right? And the, the I'll say your demands might be uh, met at a higher frequency if you've got the backup. And how are they targeting the backup environment is primarily through the fact that there is human error, that there is unpatched software, that there is unauthorized, I'll say, or stale credentials, right? And these are all the things that zero access architecture I talked about remove. So the fact that they're getting into these stale credentials or back doors or into the backup environment because credentials are weak or they're repetitive, those are things that zero access architecture completely eliminates. So what that means is most backup organ or solutions has dozens and dozens and dozens of entry points or attack vectors. So that, that I'll say that uh, I'll say the attack vector is only expanding as we get as as they're targeting the backup environment. So that's something that um, we take great pride in with our solution that we eliminate majority of almost all of those back doors so that you're really kind of clamping it down in terms of uh, entry points that could result in what I just shared there, which is a pretty frightening email that, that the entire company woke up to. Yeah, actually a very well-crafted email. You could see how they took uh, probably a good uh, PR or advertising class before they wrote it. Uh, unfortunately, this that's a reality, as, as, as you mentioned. So, look, we've covered a lot of ground and... and in closing, I was wondering if maybe for our viewers, uh, you know, IT professionals and, and certainly have had to deal with ransomware, most of them, and if not, well, believe me, it's only a matter of time, unfortunately. Uh, what type of recommendations would you have uh, for them? What are the two or three things they should do, think about uh, when they wake up in the morning? Yeah, I, I think that when we reflect back on how most of these attacks are happening today, it is through you know, breach credentials is through back the back doors. Um, so having, I'll say, strong access controls, you know, leveraging principles of least privilege, role-based access controls, multi-factor authentication, these are all things that can certainly help reduce that. Um, in terms of encryption, I mean, you should be encrypted all the way through. So end-to-end -end encryption, in-flight, at rest, at storage should be encrypted. Um, it's a it's amazing how many customers we talk to that are not using immutable storage across the board as a default. Um, so having your storage immutable so it can't be rewritten, overwritten, um, certainly things that is certainly an element that we have as a default with, within our solution. And th then finally, having, I'll say, an isolated backup infrastructure um, that has separation from production, has this isolated security zone. Those are things that we're also recommending and, and, and certainly, yeah regular patching. Nobody likes to do it. Nobody likes to, to go through the process of updates and patches and, and doing all that work, but certainly needs to be done. Well, Andy, thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing a little bit more than, than, than maybe I expected because what a complete solution here. Uh, I really like um, the, the isolation and the recommendations that, you know, that you've, 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 you've identified. Uh, it's definitely a conversation, I think, in the industry that uh, we're having, but maybe not enough. And uh, to be clear, there is no recovery unless you have a backup and protecting the protector is really the rule. And with all the back doors that exist today, it has become a very difficult job. So uh, in many ways, I think it's a nice wake up call here to, to have you remind us uh, of all of these uh, best practices that we really need to uh, to deploy. And of course, at scale, it's very complicated. But remember, everybody uh, can be affected, uh, large and small businesses. So uh, best practices ap apply really across the board. 
So with this, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you very much, Andy, for joining us, for uh, you know, allowing us to discover what cobalt iron does. And certainly, I'm sure we'll, we'll have more conversations because, uh, well, ransomwares and, and cyber resilience, those are topics that are not going away anytime soon. Thank you, Andy. Sure. And uh, thank you to our viewers for watching us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.